All right, continuing with Gunthor. This time I'm going to put him on a handle so that I don't have to pick him up just from the base on the table, which is challenging. Get him on a handle, make sure it's nice and secure. I just use some poster putty. This is white poster putty, but I prefer the blue. It's just what I had available. Gonthor. Today we're going to be focusing on some of the undergarments, so sleeves that stick out, as well as hair and boots. I try to pick things that have some space between them so I can paint multiple things in one setting. And I know it's a challenge watching these sometimes because the camera tends to focus on my closer hand and not the miniature. I hope that's not too much of a distraction. And as I can upgrade my equipment, I definitely will. That way I can keep the focus on the miniature and less auto focus on my hand. But we're just going with an off-white. This is a linen white on the sleeves. And great fabric color for white fabrics. You can do a lot with it by how you shade it. And works really well. Of course, that staff area is a little bit challenging getting under it, especially when it's on a base, but it's okay. I think we get good coverage, good opacity. We're using it right out of the bottle. So it's not super thin, and that's kind of our base coat for that color. And then I'm actually going to shade it with a very light colored violet. And this is going to, of course, soak down into the shadows. This is where I'm going to start bringing in some of the purples in a subtle way on the fabric. And that will be kind of shading onto the white rather than going from the violet up to the off-white into white it's just a little bit different aspect moving on to the boots this is just tanned leather and we're going to do these boots just like regular leather boots we do them a lot and these will be lighter color normally the boots I make I make a darker kind of a red brown to be more like work boots but these ones, I wanted them to look a little more supple. They've got a lot of detail in them, sculpted in them, and lots of little kind of bends. And I really wanted to show that these are softer boots. So going with tanned leather, then I'm just going to do a couple of coats because I do have this one thin just slightly so that I get real good coverage into the areas especially around the staff and the ground and then we'll just wash it with a dark brown back into the sleeves now this is just the linen white again we're just putting on highlights on higher areas that purple wash that we did has kind of settled in and almost dyed the high areas so it's got a decent transition into the deepest areas where the violet is really going to sit in the shaded areas. So this just brings us back up to a cloth, a white cloth color with the deepest areas being that kind of violet color. I do have to say here, the camera does not do this justice how well this looks, but the overall aspect I think came out really well. I think the player is going to be happy with the mini, and I think it looks really good personally, but of course I am biased too. And you can see I try to do on these little cuffs both ends and leave that kind of tinted color to the center. And that gives just a, a little more flowy or fabric-y feel to it. And just hitting those mid-tones. And again, it just doesn't do it justice in the camera, but overall I think it came out pretty good. And just touching those up, making sure we've got good flow, that it feels like fabric. Almost, I don't want it to look too silky, but just a good supple cotton cloth that's got some purple shading to it. 
And here just making sure we got good coverage on the boots. Again, that opacity is very important for this base layer because we're going to be doing a wash over it and then highlights up starting with the base tone after the wash dries. And I had been painting earlier, so my dehumidifier is actually off because I wanted to extend my paints on what I was painting earlier. So when we do the wash on this one, we actually have to let it sit for a bit, but we'll edit that out. And again, just tanned leather is the name of this color and works great for supple leathers. I use it a lot for the pouches and packs that I do. But a lot of differentiation too from the skin tone, so it, it'll look really good, especially once it's based. Which Matroth this morning actually is going to be based and join the rest of the party on the table. I'm very excited for him to be completed and join his companions on the table. But Gontor, as the warlock, there are aspects that he doesn't know exactly who his patron is. And initially, up through level 5, I had intended for that exploration so that when we got to level 5, which was initially where I wanted to start this campaign that I'm running, that these characters are in, um, because we started earlier, I started them at level 1 and figured some of the kind of background pieces they would be able to build from level 1 to level 5. Now the party is level 5, so the player is going to kind of um, get that once he's able to rejoin us and find out the impacts of the pact that he has to the patron, which again, we'll talk more about his patron when we get to the backpack. It's going to be a lot of fun to integrate that aspect of the uh, character into this miniature. Here I'm just doing a wash, a dark brown over top of that tanned leather that'll sink in and set the shadows. And uh, that actually took quite a while to dry. You can see it's still got some light sheen to it. It's still not 100% dry just because it's very humid here where I'm at. So I'm gonna do the hair and you can see the hair has a lot of sculpt to it, a lot of detail in it. And this is where I break. I cannot use that synthetic for this hair, so I have to move to my natural bristle brush just so I can get in all those little crevices. The natural bristles just flow so much better when you've got sculpted details like this that I can't do the synthetic on the hair. So switch out to the natural bristle and Gunthor is going to have black hair as opposed to a jaw had that lighter hair color. Again, this is going to be kind of a point of differentiation. Even though it's a changeling disguised as a half elf, I'm going to do some things that are kind of contradictory. There aren't many half elves usually for players that have black hair. Most of the time they have more elven colored hair. So really making sure that on the table this sticks out as not a standard half elf. So I decided to go with black hair. We'll highlight that with blues and then pinpoints of white. And that staff definitely in that area gives a little bit of challenge but we push through it and allow those boots some time to dry and make sure those sleeves are nice and dry. Then we can go back in. This is the base tone, the tanned leather. We're just touching up the higher areas to give some differentiation on the leather, get it back up to its base co color and have those shadows kind of sink in. So an important aspect, anytime you do a wash, you want to go back through and hit some areas with your base tone just to bring them back up to true color, to that true base tone color. You can see on the top of that foot, 
Gontor's right foot, how those shadows kind of lay in the top of the foot, show some of the detail in the sculpt where the leather is kind of wrinkled up. And just picking out the higher areas, these will get highlighted further with a leather white blended with the tanned leather. And that way they really stand out the worn areas. Wherever there's the most wear is going to be the lightest in tone. And with shoes and boots, generally anywhere you got natural folds, toes, your the like outer edge and heels. And then of course the top where you pull it up or where you push your foot down into it if you don't pull it up. And moving in now, we want to continue on these boots. This is a blend of the tanned leather and the leather white. Pull in the straps, get the edges, really get those high areas where there's the most wear. We'll do one more bit of highlight on the boots after this of almost straight leather white. It'll have just a touch of this color blended into it just so it isn't too stark of a difference. But just the biggest wear areas that we want to show where this leather has worn through off of that tanned leather color. And into the hair I'm putting in a deep blue. This is a deep sea blue. Black hair oftentimes has blue tones to it, natural black hair. So as light is hitting it, it takes on a bluish tone, which sounds comical, but it actually is pretty accurate. And I put that on almost in like a wave format. I don't worry about any type of shading in this area. This is just now we're blending in some ashen blue to highlight further. And this one is going to be a smaller bit and some of the hairs we're going to start actually picking out the ends. So when I'm doing hair the crown and the ends are what I generally focus on. Gives it a pretty realistic look for the miniature when you see them on the tabletop and really those blue tones kind of set that black really well. Here is the lightest color we're going to do on the boots. Again this is the leather white with just a touch of the blended leather white and tanned leather into it. So this is going to be wherever there's the most wear, wherever that leather gets the most touch and rub. That's where it's going to be the lightest in tone. And we really focus on the cuff areas and the kind of instep and toes and heels. Not bad for the boots. Stands out from the skin tone. Now we're going to start singling out the hair and this is ashen blue with just a touch of off-white and I'm actually using ghost white in these little bits to highlight this up. That'll give us the brightest tone before we do just pure white. Pure white is where the light is directly reflecting off the hair. So this is actually the hair's brightest highlight. And again, just looking at the crown and then the tips of the hair gives it a really good natural look to it. And then just bright white, we're going to just really lightly touch. You can see a little bit of challenge with the brush here. This is just because there is so few hairs 
to hold the paint, it dries very, very fast, even with the high humidity that I suffer with. It just dries in that brush, so we have to constantly go back and give it a quick clean and make sure we get all the dried paint out and then right back into the bright white highlights wherever the light is hitting that hair that's where we want to put it very individualized and very small touches and the black hair looks pretty decent especially against that deeper skin tone the boots are looking really good now I'm using the darkest blue that I had to put in some eyebrows because we want this to match the hair but I don't want to go just with black because we did black lining there we go hair just like that now we can just focus on kind of finalizing some of the touches on the lips and you can see I've got just a little too much there so I've got to take it off and this will give us kind of the face will be finalized with the lips we use the base color blended with a highlight color and then just a touch of pink makes the lip look pretty natural and stands it out from the sunken cheek and kind of right under. There's Gunthor so far. Looking pretty decent, looking like he's getting ready to get some clothes on next time. Little stray brush hair there. But Gunthor coming right along. As we work on the fabrics for the next stage and probably the staff. We'll see you then.